I'm Giovanni Singleton, Lunch Poems Coordinator, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you here today. I invite you all to sign up for, on our um, mailing list, which is um, at the librarian's desk, and also to pick up one of our um, event flyers, which we also have available there. Um, coming up in, on December 3rd is um, Richard Moore, and I invite you all to, um, to come join us for that great event. Um, this is, uh, we're celebrating the publication of his very first collection, and he will be introduced by the poet Brenda Hillman. Um, today, um, we have Graham Faust, um, and we also have a special treat, um, a preview of his latest collection, A Mouth in California, um, just out from Flood Editions. And actually, today is the very first place we, where it's available. So I would encourage you all to um, purchase copies and have Graham sign them. Um, Today's event, as well as previous readings, are um, available on our website for viewing um, in case you want to uh, go back down memory lane or if there's something else that you feel you've missed. Um, they are typically posted online um, within a week of the event. We're also on Facebook, and so please log on and become our friend. So um, please welcome Robert Haas, who will introduce um, today's reader, Graham Faust. Thank you. Thanks, Giovanni. Thank you, Graham, for being here. Um, I, I just want to underline it would really be fun if you tell your friends um, uh, that Richard Moore uh, is publishing his first book of poems at the age of 90 having been one of the founders of KPFA, creators of public radio in this country, and then of KQED, a filmmaker, filmmaker about poets, uh, writing poetry all those years. Um, when he was an undergraduate, reading in poems that here with Robert Duncan and Jack Spicer and Robin Blazer and the other poets at the time, and this book is coming out and we want to celebrate him. Uh, so we've, in this series, often had poets um, of uh, like Chesov Milos and Lawrence Ferlinghetti and Gary Snyder, who've accomplished bodies of work. And we've also been very proud of bringing poets who are just uh, coming into their power and into everybody else's awareness. And I think Graham Faust is, was, when I was first thinking we have to get Graham in this series, was one of those who was coming into and is now definitely come in to that role of being one of the really interesting poets of his generation now writing. And we're celebrating today this book, uh, A Mouth in California, which has an appropriate picture of a mouth uh, on it. Uh, I was thinking of how to introduce Graham and uh, was thinking a little bit about the kind of poet he was not. And the poet that occurred, the kind of poet he was not that occurred to me, though probably he would find similarities, was Hart Crane, or a poet whose main idiom is voluptuous. Uh, I thought of the line, the, the seals spin drift, gif, dr spin drift gaze toward paradise, and thinking that that was exactly the kind of rhetoric that Graham's poems are inclined to be suspicious of. He's, uh, he was born in Tennessee and grew up in Wisconsin. I think he's culturally, I don't know whether a Midwesterner rather than a Southerner, and the kind of Midwesterner that I associate some of his writing with would probably be the darkest side of Garrison Keillor's jokes about bachelor Norwegian farmers producing pure wheat. Um, if the vision were dark enough, um, he's, he, in his writing, he went to uh, uh, to a master's program in writing at, uh, at George Mason University, and then where I think he came to be mentored by Carolyn Forche, among others, and then to the to a PhD at, at the University of at State University of New York at Buffalo, um, where Susan Howe was Charles Bernstein there when you were there. So it right in the midst of the aesthetic of language poetry when it was at its um, most effervescent, if that's the right word, for it. His tradition seems to me the minimalist one of George Oppen and 
Robert Creeley, that is one of the ambitions of his poems is to, is to get the thing said as plainly as possible, um, in as few words as possible, uh, but also uh, um, uh, I think there's a strong feeling for me in, in that, given that one side of him wants to say the, the darkest thing in the simplest way. Um, another part of him is, uh, is inclined to the kind of meditative play that um, Stevens is interested in. And I was thinking that as an example of that and as a subject that people would have, some of the students here would appreciate would be to read from a poem of his called To My Student Loans, <laughs> which begins, a stanza, a stanza, a room, a room, a room. Stanza, of course, means it's the Italian word for room, and so every stanza is a little room, as John Donne would say. And it's a pentameter broken into two lines. A stanza, a stanza, a room, a room, a room. Suddenly, I un unemployed, I wonder how much per sway is the wind worth today in these trees? It's a wonderful way in to a poem. Uh, Carolyn Forche, who is one of his mentors, wrote a book, of, uh, edited a a book called The Poetry of Witness. And so Graham, I think so is the right transition word. So Graham, uh, uh, one of his early books has a poem, first book has a poem called Against the Poetry of Witness, in, which contains this stanza, hope makes torture possible. What is a poem? Hope makes torture possible. What is a poem? Um, another of his poems is called um, Less Tourism, More Strip Mining, <laughs> which is an interesting poem, also interesting because the other poet on campus today is Wendell Berry of Kentucky, who's been talking about the violence of strip mining. So I, I think this is a metaphor, not an argument for the coal industry. Um, but it's an interesting one about, about how to write a poem. Less tourism, more strip mining. And part of the, the contrarian force of his poems. Um, another poem that really struck me is called Vow. It's probably occurred to all of you at one time or another that the people that you're bound to hurt and be hurt by most are the people you love. Um, half of love's a sweet or not scar. The other, a sweet or not scar. I will not not wound you. Will always will only and always share either sweet or not scar. That's the vow. I will not not wound you. Will always and only share either sweet or not scar. Graham has published four books. Two of them are available here. This one is not in the bookstores yet. This is its first appearance, the new book, A Mouth in California. He's a tough, sinewy, really smart, dark, interesting poet making um, art that's just worth attending to. Welcome, Graham Faust. For There's a sign here that says, mouth 10 inches from Mike. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Bob, for that. Uh, that was a lovely introduction. Um, and I do love Hart Crane, although, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't write like him necessarily. Um, I'm getting, I don't even know if I'm getting over it, but I've had a cold for about what seems like the last four years, so I <laughs> apologize. But I think it's, it seems to be under some control. And I'm just going to read um, a little from each of the books. Study for Stander. Today's blue shape was so close as to go unnoticed. The robot so real, 
but I thought it was a robot. Touch injures. As strangers, we had everything. For days, I was sure our ghosts were as sore. For days, I was almost there. The flooded grave. This is a, a sort of after a photograph by Jeff Wall, who's a Canadian photographer who makes these big, um, highly staged uh, photographs that are in light boxes. They're pretty stunning when you see them. And in this one, it, he's, it's this uh, graveyard with a grave being dug, or in the process of being dug, but in the grave is like, there's been tropical fish and it's like this weird little ocean scene. So it's, it's, uh, it's very unsettling when you see it. The flooded grave. In what's become this room, we are hostless for the most part. There is infinite glitter. There is earth. An open grave, let's say, not automatically horrific. Or the not saying raining in what is now this room. We tune and we fade, not undetermined upon bloom. We shatter that way. We don't and then we do. Alphabet. Pieces of shadow we beat against a dream. The empty country into which we are gradually, casually amassed. Narcissus. A whole bright ocean's out of cadence, in place. Knives from a child are not as beautiful to pull. Story problem. Find the uninevitable remainder as the city's sleepers clamor for a bird's worth of air. Then the day's last water comes to rust in the drain. Then the anthem and the too bright snow. So how to grow the silent tidal diamond from disease? And how's the going going given me? John Berryman. I've lost it all wrong. Bouquets of ladders the dead an idea. From here, familiar door after door, the snow into rain and money into money. The hand pretends and word crowns deed regardless. The river drags, is right all day and drowns any case against illness. Found centerfold. Are there leaves? Are there stars and are they waving? I couldn't trust the leaves if they were stars. No one waited and all condition waned. Unavailable symbol, she quite rang out. Go, come, from dirt and what it colors. Richard Pryor addresses a tearful nation. Sometimes it gets so quiet, you want I fire a gun in me. You look as if I haven't seen a ghost. With a breath, with your breath I could, with a breath I could collapse. Here are all but your faces falling into line, into mine. Hospital. A light where even pain is lovely. Pins and hours. You, your body, as something with which to live intimately. Revenge enough, the spine comes uncertain. A fiction cared for, an occupant locked. 
biography's fault in us all. Against the poetry of witness. I guess in, in re, I'm not all necessarily happy with that title, and I can't really think of what else I would call the poem, but um, I think people read the against as like anti, but I, I, I really, I think I meant it more as leaning, <laughs> like put forces pushing against rather than, um, rather than sort of being against her. Um, anyway, against the poetry of witness. Pulled by the wheels, today studies us and such. We're all for forgetting. Our minds come shut. Disappearance has its way of making love understandable. Hope makes torture possible. What is the poem? From a finished basement. In our arteries and eyes, a hundred light bulbs throb like drugs. The furnace, a permanent mishap. And up in the dusk, there is lucid debris, a conduit, a wire mask, a swastika of corn. Boy and or girl small will find some horizon, an intricate faking in which to lose way. Here we are, not speaking or dead. Here we are, or dead. To what do we owe this forgetting not to kiss? Not that any given face is not afraid. Retail. Every day I give money to no one I love. May dust be instruction. May love be insignificant enough. Once done fucking, you made me drive half drunk to a store for some ice cream. Standing in line, I saw candy, some magazines, a child with one arm. I had just the sudden nothing there to think of. To grammatology. Let me lay quiet a while, lost at least in thought. Let me unsentence me to things. Give me the time to give me away, if only like a place I wanted saved. Fashion. The other night, I was looking at pictures of successful businessmen. Near dawn, the pictures became an increasingly distorted and pornographic hedge. Then something ate something. Then something ate everything. This is the end, hint, hint, of the animals. There is no quote, my own, unquote, in how I'm summoned. Somewhere there's a monkey who grooms all and only those monkeys who do not groom themselves. Expensive meal. In my listening glass, a Cyrillic sun hums. Humility's a dare. There is always a fugitive meat. Politics. Leave the room to itself. Compare it to a sleeping living creature. Time is the dark packed house of this place, the luck of the desert cut into the floor of the desert. Everything's ready. A light burns wherever necessary, like skin, like a prison, each thought's an instant ruin. Leave the room to itself. Here's a needle. 
Here is the sea. Miscarriage. Light, parts, and country come between mother and father, this and that ocean. Bones are a boat, the brain stem din. Information is impossible. Interstate 80. This poem was written in Iowa, so I know Interstate 80 gets here eventually, but this is more the Iowa part of Interstate 80. So it's a long road. Uh, Interstate 80. This world is conclusion. On a clear day, you can go blind. The unknown is almost interesting with its infinite I'm not kidding. Who are you? Why is it we can't touch when I so want to? That is, to kiss and be kissed slick, be gripped as ash. Would you look at those trucks of trucks? They're only facts. We've years of brightest cold and fewer roads. Don't yet be amazing. There's such a thing as sentimental peril You'll see, one needs only a few songs, really. There's no beginning to decay. Rural mall with flag at half mast. Helpful, a barn in the fall, a mall parking lot. What I can see all day, a system limping through its grass a spinning animal. And that the question concerning the problem is part of the problem, and that now it's just the job against my hand. I could change this into history and forget it, but for the love of the love of a god, you do not move. I like the way I'm still not dead here, the way I buy my way to environment. Soft as blood begins your corridor of things, and what to my wondering eyes should appear, should stand perishable there. Hard flowers, one hour, my film. Two versions of the same watery domestic poem. A lake unfroze and broke, its water looked for us. Dim spring storms clicked our windows until June. I had good news and bad news. Love is trust in time. You left, and you left an earring in the bed. I took it for a little rearview mirror. I want to tell you I miss you. You're not gone. Your clothes are somehow folded near an overturned chair, glint, be it tin or diamond or idea. It doesn't seem to want to rain. Google. All the fish look shitty on their ice today, the fruit like a dull pile of metal, a dead bag commutes between the street and the trees. The sky goes every way. I never find you. You don't even live once. This is a song about quality and that great gospel jest we call knowledge. Say she drops the bathroom water glass, cleans blood from her hands with a towel he slid under their new designer plunger. So she just lies there now, feeling odd and idiotic in their bathroom, her shadow. She would leap, he's well aware, at the sound of ripping paper. He will walk into the house, throw something down,
why I am not a painter. The most difficult, beautiful thing I think to paint would be a close-up. A close-up of a single square of toilet tissue floating in a bowl. Or so I'm told. No matter. My bad. There is no genuine thinking without a sense of indignity. This heart of earth of mine can only hear is only yours. Life story. Plants push. The ground bounces. The sun comes up, a sweet nerve. Scrapes of radio, small songs of dying or of not, just touch the beach. I don't know what I like. What I'm doing is stalling. What I'm doing is staring at good red meat like it's a mirror like it's something I might already only believe. So everything else I'll read is from the new book. The sun also fizzles. What's this place between geography and evening? The sun also bludgeons. A car has three wheels. And what's the wrong way to break that brick of truth back into music? Money belongs together. I'm right where I wanted to leave me. Rain belongs together. At mirror, I've neither me believed. I've come covered in arena dust, my mouth a sleeve's end, meatless. I've come somewhat up, and I'm here to lick the static from the ground. Twice I've been evidence of, if anything, my breathing. Not particular. I've pissed against a cage, pretending wind. Swallowed whole, a songbird might could claw back through the hawk, or so I've thought. The choosing of a word might be its use, the only poem. To the writer. Another cloud spun to nothing, one of nature's more manageable kills, another borderline meaningless morning, save for everything. You claim you kissed a certain picture with such patience you became it, so who hasn't? You're of one long weary trouble, you wear your hard mind on your hand. Thus your dumb touch, your clunky fuss, your little millions, your stomach newly stuffed with amputations. Quiet and furious dots of distant rooms, rooms, I would add, through which you'll never move or sleep, begin to mean. In one of them, humor collapsed in a painful curl, an odd head at the back of its throat. It's what's to bleed about. Lyric poetry after VE day. These were a dream's prerequisites. War and then war and then war and then war and then insects testing for sweetness, electric bulbs. Early in marriage, he'd switched them off, saved money. She'd wanted a bright and more welcoming home. Late in same, she dimmed them for what someone else called ambiance. He'd wanted light, goddammit, so as to see. I think they're dead now or something. I'm only writing this. Pretend and two-dimensional. I am, and so have always been barbaric.
Nuances of a Theme by Stevens or Why I Love Country Music. These sounds are long in the living of the year. The honky-tonk out of the somnolent grasses is a memorizing, a trying out to keep. What I wanted to say, the wind ripping up and into everywhere, was don't say nothing. This was not allowed. What I said was, don't say anything. This too was not allowed. The wind again, ripping up and into everywhere. The truth, I knew it, breath and heaven, one thing. A thing for shrieky talk and fearless error. A thing about to happen to anyone. The first three lines of that poem are, actually, are from Stevens, and I just remember sort of freaking out that the word honky-tonk was in a Wallace Stevens poem. It seems like the last person would have that word in his poem. So. Self-portrait in Super Target. Scrutinized by scores of raging white fluorescent lights, you've not been watching you. But like a potter working clay to make a bottle that may one day keep your teeth, you bet you yank and pinch and push and smile. Abrupt, dumb, your whole lifetime finally, your song decides, as though crushed, to say nothing. You tongue imagined money up the aisle. Save as, save the last dance for me. This is sort of uh, after the painter Mary Heilman's work. She has a big painting called Save the Last Dance for Me. You are cordially invited to read something else. And like a word, I lean to please pieces. There's a wet log moaning in the fire. I live then biographically. I live a way of living or more correctly, I live ways of living. I live plural biographically, torn up between Kant and some dove. Wire hearted here. On this, my first day online since the rumor died, I drink into a box of pink light. Nobody help me. I'm someone I'm almost not. With a look, I could break your bright teeth, you gulping hero. The rest is research, big minute, big minute, more later. The old thought jerking like a flame. So moved. I, duly finite, pass from animal to remnant. If, for anything, the meat of me votes to get away. All day, reflections from beside the point life click by me. Last one crossed from the list in the sands, the youngest ghost. Poem for Ezra Pound and Johnny Knoxville. Back away from and so into you, your every bone ablaze. As if deep, dim human ruin came to news you'd want to freeze. Squeeze out the lights. Monday, Tuesday, forever. In one memory and in the other, I'm paid to stray from places where I've tried to count quietly. I'm paid to not break open in the dark. Clouds already, the cold glass as always, an hour with all the thrill of a faded stain and average love. I've just been hovering over my blood and that's something, but grief is neither thought nor grief enough. 
the facts aren't working. No one walks into a room, and so I go out through my mouth. No one walks into a room, and so on. These palaces, still, still palaces. A heap of language. I wash the knives and wipe the table. You come from the ocean and dry yourself. Inside us, apologies inch their way around. Most of what we say will hardly matter. Academy Fight Song. At the end of the night, night, night again, another night. Or do I say that it's still night, night continued? Part of me, not quite my working face, would just love to, and months approach like stones. Wilted to official, I might keep here like a leaf, might eat my prayer, might say to feign astonishment and wear. The absolute bleeds between these places, half inflated. What I get's a nick of space, these reams of paper. Poem with television, <clears throat> excuse me. Poem with television. But first another picture of the world. I thought I saw you in the mirror through the window. You do remember, don't you? Absence of evidence isn't an answer. I thought you saw me through the window in the mirror. You don't remember, do you? Evidence of absence isn't an answer. What part of what part of no don't you understand, don't you understand? On one more American money ugly morning, busy intersection skittish in a bed. Greased, it would seem, what I call, what I used to call belief slides through me. Is it just me or am I alone? Just read a few more. Um, Poem for Jack Spicer. The more I pull it all to pixels, the more to sleep the radio goes, right? And to be dead would be to be modern. At the at once bustling and dismally hushed airport, goodbye will just congeal into a condition. The jets, they've got that rained around look. Not unbreakable, hand in imagined hand. I used to insist on fading stations Facts outskirts, a back to the void. Paper for water and water for air. I'd think for words and tremble numbers, remember? Wasn't that where I lived? This ocean, I just assumed it would look bigger. Its poems shapes itself and its waves come off as contagious. Kick the curtain, kick the rain. Space too will tear away through us. Later though, there could be peace like a flaccid hex, one weepable question in the blooms. I might then shred said sad question, try to take up its traces, remake it, but I've got no blueprints, not a tool, the shed's done dog-eared into the dirt. When no one knows my name, I look half different under my silvery Bank of America gift umbrella, and unlike other thrashed visuals, the sun still crams light into the world. I mean to be in that light and in the world in the way that I meant to show up in the picture just snapped by some stranger in the middle distance. It's not a thicket if I can't get me and whoever else into it. Let's call what I'm on a moon of hurt. We're all limited by the plumb line, that imperative that collapses in the directions of egg and ash. There should be more works of art like those on which I wrote no dissertation. The animal empire just scratches. I am trying to make my skin run.
after taxes. We're more distant in the red, more ugly. I don't know, but I've been told it's a fear. There are things less important than money. It's a little like watching paint not dry, or like a bomb didn't go off in here. We're more boring in the dark, less ugly. We watch the moon get up on its gurney. We try to pretend it's a chandelier. There are things less important than money. Come dawn, we're the Polaroid of mercy, our stomachs left unpuckered by our spears, reinvented by sleep, we're still ugly. Stapled to the promise of the daily rage to purchase, our cause is close to clear. There are things less important than money. Our heads are talking over us, honey, and there was never not a fiscal year. We're timeless in the red, beyond ugly. There are things less important than money. This is the last poem I'll read. It's called My Graham Faust. Gone's his imposter and gone's his gawky cross. Gone's his tweaked legacy's hit list. Hooray, and gone's his waste of song. Gone's his civilized wrist. Gone's his long exploded gut. Gone's his cruel joy, his humbling drunk, his good tired. Gone's his one in every clod of common sense. Gone's the water from under his mumble. Gone's his mumble from up in the room. Yet to go are his books and his bloodless clothes and shoes. Gone's his broken oven and its beef. Gone's his wet secret. Gone's his pillar and what it let fall. Gone's his excellent source of nothing, his kick-ass pettiness, his premium harm. Gone's the bite of you he spit. Gone's his vague sense of what's to be done. Gone's the dream that likely scraped at him for more and more and more, and gone's his walk. Gone's his crass commiseration. Gone's his shack of gauze and ice. Gone's his tiny fountain, and gone is his glutinous light. Gone's his want to need basis. Gone's his happy plastic stain. Gone's his glass wolf, his lazy sperm, his pack of exactness. Gone's his played through lack of played through games of pain. Gone's his fleshy shovel. Gone's his ticket. Gone's his train. Gone's the friend who stepped away and almost saved him. Gone's the blame. Gone's his sister. Gone's his doctor. Gone's his transom. Gone's his view. He's nobody's autobiography. Whose are you? Thank you.